HTML is the easiest and the most fun to write programming language in existence. Most people start their journey in programming with HTML and today you shall see why. In this video we are going to create a basic HTML document and go over some of the basic HTML elements. The emphasis would be on what makes a well-formed HTML document and explanation of its structure, hierarchy and organization and not on covering the list of HTML elements. So expect only a handful of elements introduced. The video is part of series of playlist yet another full stack development course with link in the description and we shall introduce other HTML elements later when it makes sense. I'm Ali from Learn Awesome. Let's get started. So earlier in the series, we installed and set up Visual Studio Code as our coding environment with live preview extension and we'll be making use of that environment today. And you can follow the video if you haven't. So for the sake of practice, create a new folder for this session in somewhere on your machine, which would act as your top level container folder for your HTML and other files and open it using either this file open folder and select the path to the folder. Or in my case, I'm going to close this and create a new folder on Windows or the same command would work in other environments as well. So mkdir first HTML. Then I'm going to go into this folder and type code dot. And Visual Studio Code would launch in the context of your top level folder like this. So let's create our HTML file. So I go to this new file. I can click it and type my first HTML document, HTML, press enter and the file is created and open for editing in the preview pane. I can also open the live preview on the side, which we installed using the live preview extension from Microsoft. And let me introduce you to another cool feature of Visual Studio Code. So if I go to view menu, appearance, and there is something called this Zen mode, which can also be invoked using control KC. And if I select this, it brings up the document editor as kind of a full screen environment. You get rid of all the distractions here and there, like the Explorer view that we were seeing earlier. So you can focus on your document and not be distracted by things other than this. This is something I wanted to introduce. You can get uh, out of it by pressing escape key two times, right? So let's stay there. So control KZ and let's start editing our document. So the first thing that we are going to add to our HTML file is a doc type declaration. This is the first line of code required in every HTML file and instruct the browser to interpret the HTML code correctly and display the web page as intended. It tells browser which version of HTML the document is written in. So it uses the proper rendering mode suitable for reading and rendering that version. So let's start by typing in angle bracket and exclamation mark and you would notice the first awesome feature of Visual Studio Code it knows you're editing an HTML document so as soon as you start typing the angle bracket it knows you are trying to add a doc type declaration it would suggest to complete it so let's press the tab key and it would complete the line the preview is blank because it's just a declaration there's nothing to show here so why are we not providing any version so note the latest version HTML5 is now called a living standard. So it does not need a version number anymore. We just call it HTML and it instructs the browser that we are trying to use the latest version. But if you intend to create an HTML document using HTML4 or earlier, you're going to provide a full URL to the corresponding doc type declaration. But we are not going to do that. We can, you can look it up online how to do that. All right, next we shall add an HTML element. So in next line, we are going to start typing HTML and press tab to complete it and then type the closing bracket. And as soon as I do that, it adds the ending tag as well. Press enter to format and uh, you can see an indentation has been auto applied. The contents of HTML elements between start and end tags are always written indented from their parent as a convention. Nothing stops you from using your own preferred formatting though the browser won't mind. All right, so the first thing that we are going to add in the HTML 
contents is head element type head closing bracket enter and next I'm going to add a title element inside the head so title is something that appears as text on the top of Chrome or any browser you choose title is not meant to appear in content area so your preview would remain empty but as you start typing a title between start and end text of title element you would notice the live preview would stop showing file name as tab content and start showing you the title instead so keep your eyes focused here as I type the title element and I go like title and my amazing first web page see uh, if I save and open this file in Chrome right now it would also show your title content on the tab but I'm going to not do that at this time so there is a lot more that we can do in head section and we saw some glimpses in our HTML elements video earlier but for this exercise let's settle our title and move on to the next element in the HTML section which is the body element we shall have lots of practice in head section later in series so you won't miss much before we move to body element let me show you something cool so if I uh, hover over any HTML element let's say this title the Visual Studio Code is going to show you a very detailed description of that element and at the bottom there would be something called an MDN reference and if I click it and open it would open documentation on Mozilla Development Network or MDN for short which is considered to be the best documentation on HTML you would time and again be referred to this resource for extremely well explained specs on all HTML elements attributes and examples let's add a body element and before we move ahead body element is the visible content part of an HTML document and whatever you add here impacts what is being shown on the screen in the browser so let's add a h1 heading over here and if you recall there were six headings in basic HTML where h1 was the largest so I'm going to make its content to say my big fat heading all right now let's add a h2 heading and see how it fares compared to the h1 heading all right you see it it is bold and big but not as big as the h1 heading so note that h1 to h6 are relatively different in sizes and impact and the results would vary from browser to browser since html does not dictate what an html heading must look like so each browser would take liberty to show its own variant of headings so they would never be the same all right next next let's add a div element and a div is interesting as it does not have any shape of its own you don't see anything in the content area it's an invisible container and it is also called content division element its shape can be manipulated by styling and that has an effect on the shape of its child elements which are visible divs are one of the most used elements as they allow a group of elements to be styled placed and managed on a web page as a logical unit we'll work with that later in our styling for now we are just introducing it to you so since it wouldn't make sense to have a div without children let's add a paragraph element inside and then see the code block right. so as you can see we get swigglies under misspelled words and if we hover over it we have the option to fix it using the auto fix and it gets fixed automatically okay so on the right side in the preview window our web page is starting to take shape now if it stops responding just press this refresh button so I described what a paragraph does in its text if you try adding a text above or below it that would there would be a slight gap between their text content and the paragraph paragraphs can also be styled so, it, so say if you want to add an italicized block of text in your article you would add a paragraph with the italicized test style applied to it so why not add this information in our HTML so we don't forget and to do that we use a comment if you recall from an earlier video comments are not considered part of HTML document and browser is going to completely ignore them 
So I'll add a comment above paragraph like this. So I use angle bracket, exclamation mark, two dashes, and it automatically adds the ending part, dash dash, closing bracket, and I can type anything. A paragraph can be styled via CSS, and the green color is indicating that this is a comment and it is not getting part of the HTML document itself from browser's perspective. And you can see uh, our comment did not appear in our in our content area as well. But we have a useful piece of information added to our HTML file about paragraphs that we can use later on. So we have a full HTML document available to us. Let's quickly go over its contents once more. So we have a doc type declaration, which is telling us we are using the living standard of HTML for what is to follow later in the document. And what follows is the HTML element with its declaration. The browser knows this HTML element is to be displayed using the standard rendering mode, which is the latest one because of the latest version being used. The standard rendering mode is the most optimized and efficient rendering mode available with browser. We shall see rendering mode later in the series. So that is followed by the head section, which does not contain any visible content, but links, scripts, information about HTML document. Head does not mean top area of content in your browser. It is head of the HTML document. There is a difference which you must keep in mind. The visible content is only contained in the body element. So here the head section contains title, which you can actually see, but not the content area of browser, but above on the title bar over here. And if you bookmark this page, it would also serve as bookmark title. Head section can also contain an icon which accompanies the title on the tab, and it can refer to styles, fonts, and scripts. Okay, next let's focus uh, attention to the body element, and we discuss the body elements make up the content area of the browser. In here, we defined an H1 heading, which generally is the title of the entire document. So recall that HTML document is a document, and H1 serves as main title for that document. You can try playing around with H2 and H6 headings on your own. If you go ahead and add a H6 heading right now, you will notice it is hardly different from the regular text, except it might be bold or something. In fact, in Chrome, the H6 can be and usually is smaller than your regular text, but bold. H1 to H6 are just relatively bigger to smaller text. Use them carefully. Just a comment that styling for headings like other elements is fully customizable. So you can fully control what H1 or H6 heading looks like using styling or CSS. We'll look more in later styling videos. Next up is the paragraph, and paragraphs are supposed to contain text portion of your web page, and they add blank line before and after the content. Uh, I talked about it earlier, so let's actually do it and add a piece of text before and after the paragraph, like pre and post, what I actually mean by that. All right, so in the content section, you can notice that there is a blank line before and after the paragraph text. All right, let's do another experiment with paragraph. Let's add another line in the paragraph content, and this time on its own. I should be appearing in my own line, but am I? So strangely, adding a line break within a paragraph seems to have no effect on the visual presentation at all. It's like browser never noticed that our second line is in on, on its own line with a blank line in between. So note that line breaks in HTML document are considered part of editing or formatting and are totally ignored by the browser. To add a line break that would actually make its way into HTML presentation in the browser, there's a special reserved HTML element called line break, which is applied as br forward slash, I get close. If you add it anywhere in, uh, in the body element, it introduces a visual line break in HTML content. And you can see that now the second line is appearing on its own line. But since we only added one line break, it is uh, it added only one line break from the browser's perspective as well to get the same 
look and feel as uh, in our Visual Studio Code editor. We need to copy and paste it. And now it is appearing with a line break in between on its own line as expected. All right. Since uh, the formatting is a bit off, so let me fix that. And we do not need to do that manually. We are working with Visual Studio Code, of course. So we can do Shift, Alt, and F key. And the entire HTML document is going to be formatted automatically. All right, we are going to stop here with our HTML document. I know there's so many elements left to cover. But first, I want to introduce you to the exciting world of styling for which whatever we have understood so far is enough. This stage, we have a small but complete HTML document available with us to play with and get our head around the concept so far. Next up, we'll learn how to style this document using CSS in the next video. So if you like this video, please don't forget to like and share and consider subscribing to the channel so you keep getting updated as I upload more and more content on my channel. Thank you so much for watching. See you in the next one.